Hello and welcome back. In the previous videos, we calculated the solution for single degree of freedom system, which was assumed to be undamped. Again, this situation is not uh, practically uh, true, but it is very good for starting the calculation and understanding the motion and vibration calculations. In this video, I'm going to go with a free vibration system, but this time considering the damping ratio. Let's come back to our basic sketch for the system. We have a spring with the constant of K and also this time we consider the damping system with the constant of C. There is no external force Again, uh, since we are assuming that the system is completely under free vibration. We have inertia force, which is M U double dot as we went through. So the free body diagram will be M U double dot A U and C U dot. C is the damping coefficient. And we can write the equation m u double dot plus c u dot plus k u equals to zero. Now this is a second order differential equation and it is homogeneous as far as it equals to zero. I divide the entire equation with m and the result will be u double dot plus c over m u dot plus k over m u equals to zero. To solve this equation, again, we can assume k over m is omega s square and c over m, again, c is positive, m is positive. As a result, this value c over m is also positive. I can assume that this is 2 k c omega. It can be named in any way. The k c value is called damping ratio and now we are dealing with a second order ordinary differential equation that the solution needs to be done with the given equations in differential equation courses i think this is also covered in one of the videos the only video that i already have in the differential equation playlist you can check it so for the solution uh, R square plus 2 psi omega R plus omega square equals to 0. Then R equals to minus psi omega plus minus S square root of psi S square omega S square minus omega S square divided by 1. And then I can rewrite this minus psi omega plus minus omega times S square root of psi s square minus 1. The solution will be completely different according to the value of psi. So for, for this, let's start assuming that the damping ratio is greater than 1. In the engineering, especially in civil engineering, this value is quite small, perhaps 5%, 0 0.05. As a result, this uh, value psi power by 2 minus 1 is typically negative. In the mechanical engineering, this value can be up to 40%, 50%, for example, for uh, suspension systems in, in the machinery. But as far as this is completely theoretical, we can go through different uh, solutions. In this video, I'm going to continue with the assumption that KSI is greater than 1, or it can be equal to 1. So let's start with the first assumption. In this case, the system is called over damped. It means that uh, the system starts to decay very fast after the free vibration starts. As far as KSI is greater than 1, KSI square minus 1 is a positive value. As a result, we have two real answers for our equation so r will be 
minus psi omega plus omega and minus psi omega minus omega omega times a square root of psi 2 minus 1 is typically called damped natural frequency so omega is also shown with the parameter of omega n which is natural frequency meaning that the damping is neglected omega d is damped natural frequency and this parameter is omega d so we have minus psi omega plus omega d and this is minus psi omega minus omega d the solution for this case will be u as a function of t will be c1 e power by minus psi omega plus omega d times t plus c2 e power by minus psi omega minus omega d here we can rewrite the equation and we can make some basic mathematical tricks to simplify this equation u as a function of t will be e power by minus psi omega t times c1 e power by omega dt plus c2 e power by minus omega dt here t is missing and so e power by omega dt is always written as cosinus hyperbolic omega dt plus sinus hyperbolic omega dt and e power by minus omega dt is cosinus hyperbolic omega dt minus sinus hyperbolic omega dt if we substitute these to the equation then our solution becomes ut e minus psi omega t times c1 cosinus hyperbolic omega dt plus c1 sinus hyperbolic omega dt plus c2 cosinus hyperbolic omega dt minus c2 sinus hyperbolic omega dt if i assume for these two cases it will be for example a1 times cosinus hyperbolic omega dt c1 plus c2 we can assume they are a1 and for the other two terms i can assume that this is a2 sinus hyperbolic omega dt as a result we will have the solution in the form of u as a function of t is e power by minus psi omega t times cosinus hyperbolic omega dt plus b sinus hyperbolic omega dt we have two unknowns a and b and we should have two initial values for example u at t equals zero is u zero u dot at t zero is u dot zero the initial deformation and initial velocity of the system to apply the initial velocity we need to take the first derivative of the equation so u dot t will be minus psi omega e power by minus psi omega t times a cosinus hyperbolic omega dt plus b sinus hyperbolic omega dt this is for the first part plus e power by minus psi omega t times a omega d sinus hyperbolic omega dt plus b omega d cosinus hyperbolic omega dt and now we can apply the initial conditions if we substitute t as zero u at t equals to zero will be e power by minus whatever times zero will be one a plus zero as a result and it should be u zero so a will be u zero and then in the next equation u dot at t equals zero will be minus 
psi omega times 1 a plus 0 plus 1 times 0 plus b omega b. From the first equation, we know that a is u0. As a result from here, if we equals this equation to u dot 0, then we can find out b, which will be u dot 0 plus psi omega u0 divided by omega d. Now we can rewrite the final solution. u at the time of t will be e minus psi omega t. a is now u0 cosinus hyperbolic omega dt plus b which is u dot 0 plus psi omega u0 divided by omega t times sinus hyperbolic omega dt. This is the solution and we can sketch with uh, some imaginary but reasonable values for the calculation. For example, we can use MathCAD for this. So here we can start with the value of k, 10 kN per meter, the mass, let's say go with 200 kg, and u0 to be 10 millimeter, u dot 0 equals to 5 millimeter per second, and omega will be a square root of k divided by m, which is 7.1 radian per second. You can just change it to this value. And t will be 2 times pi divided by omega, which is 0 0.9 seconds. Frequency is 1 divided by t and is 1.125 hertz. We assume that psi is going to be positive. We can bring our equation and write down the function here. Omega d is a function of psi. Let's play with psi to see how it affects the solution. As a function of psi will be omega times s square root of psi power by 2 minus 1. And we can write down u as a function of t and psi. e power by minus ksi times omega times t and then u0 times cosinus hyperbolic of omega d as a function of ksi times t plus u dot 0 plus ksi times omega times u0 divided by omega d as a function of ksi multiply by sinus hyperbolic. Now we can sketch the solution with the plot. Let's go with uh, u as a function of t and psi should be greater than 1. We need to define t. Let's go with t equals to 0 up to 5 seconds. Here we can see that less than 1 second the system starts to decay significantly. So this is over damped systems. Let's change the value of these, for example, here, increasing the value of initial velocity to, let's say 200. Here you can see that it goes and it doesn't go through a single more cycle. So it starts to decay very fast after reaching the peak. So this is the system which is overdamped. Let's uh, sketch some more. Now with 1.5 and also with 1.8. Here you can see that even with 1.5, let's change the color. It should be both in millimeter, otherwise we do not have them. So 1.5 and the other one 1.8. Here you can see that how the decay system is uh, 
is starting. With the higher values of the damping, you can see that the amplitude or maximum displacement is going to be far smaller than the other case here. For example, it is up to 17 or 17.5 millimeter. And with the damping ratio of 1.8, it comes to be around 60. Now let's decrease the value from 1.2 to 1.1 and then 1.05. So here you can see that by decreasing the value of damping coefficient, the system is going to be, or damping ratio, the system is going to uh, have more amplitude deformation. I change this to 1.1. 1.05 and then 1.02 let's go with 002 and if i go with 2 with the value of 1 there is no solution for that the reason is that omega d will be 0 and this value will be undefined so here for example we can go with so still you have the solution and the system is going to decay very fast. Now let's continue with the calculation considering that we are in the critical situation. With the critical situation, let's assume that the system is critical damp system. So it means that Ksi is going to be 1. The equation for solving the differential equation will be minus si omega plus minus omega d times zero. If we come back to the basic equation from here, if we apply si to be one, then this equation will have only one solution. So r1 and r2 will be minus si times omega, which is minus omega. So in this case, u as a function of t will be c1 e power by minus omega t plus c2 t e power by minus omega t. Or I can rewrite it down that it will be e minus omega t times c1 plus c2 t. This is the general form of this equation u dot t will be minus omega e c1 plus c2 t plus e minus omega t c2. u at t equals to 0 will be 1 times c1 plus 0 should be u0. As a result, c1 will be u0. u t equals to u dot at t equals to 0. Then minus omega times c1 plus 1 times c2 will be u dot 0. As a result, c2 will be u dot 0 plus omega u0 divided by 1. And from here, we can write down the equation of ut. So it will be minus e minus omega t times u0 plus u dot 0 plus omega u0 times e times t. Here is the equation. One important note here is if Ksi is going to be 1, we know that c over m is 2 Ksi omega. And if Ksi is critical value, which is 1, then c will be 2 m omega. This value is called critical damping coefficient. C critical is 2m omega. Now we can sketch this system. If Ksi is going to be 1, what would happen with the given equation? Coming back to the MATCAT, here we can go through the a new equation. So here we can write down u critical as a function of t and Ksi, which is e power by minus omega times t times u0 plus u dot 0 plus 
omega times u0 times t. There is no omega d, there is only t and ksi, and I can just remove this ksi because the value is 1 and it is not in the function at all. Now let's sketch this in our function and I can bring this down. It will be u critical of the function, the value of t, just to have a better a sketch. Here we can see that the response to the free vibration looks like that. The system starts to decay without the harmonic response. As we can see, let me change the color to red. So this value is the minimum value of the damping ratio or the damping coefficient C critical that the system starts to decay very fast without any harmonic response. This is very beneficial especially in the measurement devices and also electrical devices to be designed based on the critical damping ratio. It prevents a kind of vibration in the system and we can see that the maximum amplitude deformation is about 18 millimeter according to the values that we considered that's the end of this video we went through the uh, single degree of freedom calculation for free vibration considering the effect of uh, damping coefficient in this video, we didn't go through the real case, especially in civil engineering or mechanical engineering system. Theoretically, we went through the critical damping coefficient and also considering what would be the response if the damping ratio is greater than one. In the next video, we will go through the uh, solution for damping ratio less than one or the damping coefficient less than C critical. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.